For a man held in such high esteem by both the corporate and political world, Idris Jalla has humble beginnings, coming from a tribe of only 5,000 people in a remote part of Sarawak in Borneo. Before turning around Malaysian Airlines, he was VP of Shell Malaysia Gas and Power. He took up his role in the current government in September this year. Your reputation really is that of a troubleshooter and a turnaround artist. Now you're charged to ensure that the government transformation program is on track, is on target. Tell me about the objectives of this program and frankly, what attracted you to the job? We said by the year 2020, we'd like to become a developed nation. And it is very clear, it's an imperative for us that if we were to achieve developed status by the year 2020, we really have to run really fast. So we can't run slowly. We got to get results really quickly and then in droves, make sure they're really big. So big, fast result is all that we encapsulate under the term transformation. So that's the objective, government transformation to get big, fast results so that we achieve vision 2020. We'd like to become a developed nation and a progressive nation. It's a just society, democratic society, and it's fair society in terms of equitable distribution of income and an educated society, caring society. But the question here is how to get there. So what we have clearly laid out under the present Prime Minister of Malaysia, we've identified the key results areas. Can you lay out actually those areas specifically and how they uh, help to uh, lift uh, the economic standing of Malaysia? The six key areas is crime, corruption, and then we also had rural basic infrastructure, urban public transport, low-income household, and education. How we will relate to improving the economic well-being for the country is very simple. On corruption and crime, if we made tremendous headway in that area, certainly a lot of foreign investors would come to the country. Now, the second aspect when you talk about it is rural basic infrastructure. So rural sector is very important. So roads must be built, electricity and water supply, etc., must be sorted out. Now, urban sector, urban public transport is absolutely key because the engine of economic growth, let's face it, really reside to a large extent in the cities. So we have to spend a lot of effort and focus on making sure that urban, urban public transport is really good, particularly in Kuala Lumpur, large cities, if, you don't, if you're not careful, you get jammed in the cities. Then low-income household, every economy, regardless of whether even relative poverty is, uh, exists, even developed nations. So the bottom 40% of the society in terms of income, the low-income household, 40%, we've got to do something about to make sure we lift their economic well-being. And that's very important. And finally, education. We have to make sure there's access to quality education in the country because uh, no nation in the world become developed nation until and unless they become competitive. You're, you're known as a, as a can-do guy, frankly. Um, I know you've only been in the position for a couple of months, but um, can you talk about progress at this stage? Yeah, we, we have identified uh, the six uh, key results areas. And the first thing I asked the, the cabinet to do upon arrival on the 1st of September, I wanted 200 of the best and the brightest civil servants. So we got them and we have them now locked in eight rooms. We call it Hotel California, for one a better word. And the, the motto was, uh, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave until you sort the problem. We write a document, and early part of next year, and hopefully in January, we should then be able to release this document, which describes the government transformation roadmap, and we make it public. The beauty of making it public is then you stand to be counted for delivery or non-delivery. And we will then, at the end of each year, we'll publish another document as regards what we have achieved and what we still have to achieve. And so that, I think, is what transparency is all about. What is interesting and what uh, probably not many people outside Malaysia know is uh, that you actually grew up in a very small village in, in frankly, in, in the jungle of Borneo. Uh, what what uh, does your rural upbringing, what impact does your rural upbringing have on you and your job, which includes alleviation of poverty, education, 
uh, infrastructure into rural areas? I come from a very, very, very small village uh, in, in the jungle of Borneo called Barrio. And it's, uh, it's close to the Kalimantan border. And I remember as a kid, there was no flights that went to, uh, to my village. And uh, if you had to walk to the nearest town, that would take you a good two weeks to do that through the jungle. So it's really remote. Education was the passport to see the world beyond. So education is a very key thing. So I always tell people, in, our, in Malaysia, one of the key things we're working on education. I'm a firm believer in education. And if you have education and you have people wanting to see beyond and it will become competitive as a nation. So by being involved in that journey, at least in some small ways, I can help to contribute to my old village and to people in rural area through education and, and then the rural basic infrastructure. What, what are, for you, sort of the principles of leadership, the, the philosophy of management? In the context of the private sector, I've always said, anchor everything on the profit and loss statement. If we did not make improvement to the PNL, the profit and loss statement, don't do it. In this context, anchor it on the KPIs, the key performance indicator, and because that's what's important. Then the next part of leadership is about discipline of action having set out your mind to, to doing something, you must be disciplined in execution.